everyone, my name is Drew Cobb, and today I will be presenting what seems to be a very popular design pattern, the iterator pattern. So, in case you are not yet familiar with what the iterator pattern is, it is a behavioral design pattern. And it's behavioral because it provides better structure for communication between objects. We also say it's object-oriented because it deals with the relationship between multiple objects. So the iterator pattern is a behavioral, object-oriented design pattern. So a quick summary of what the iterator pattern is. It uses abstract classes and concrete implementations to define a way to iterate over a chosen object. This removes the need for the client to do so manually, while also providing a specific custom iteration functionality. So some of the intent of the iteration pattern, it tries to abstract the iteration implementation away from the client. Um, it tries to provide a custom class-specific way to iterate over an object, and another nice thing about the iterator pattern is that child classes can inherit this iterator. So that's great for extensibility. Here's a generic class diagram for the iterator pattern. So as you can see, there's a client which uses, uses both an abstract collection and an abstract iteration. And each uh, the abstract cl collection will have one or many concrete instantiations of that collection. Uh, as well as the, iterate, as the abstract iteration class that will also have uh, one or many concrete iterators. Um, as a part of the iterator class, the main features there are the hasNext and next functions. So hasNext generally is a Boolean function which just checks to see if there's another item to iterate over um, in that collection of items. And the next is what usually actually does the iteration. Um, and over on the collection side of things, we just have a create iteration object, uh, but also there will be some sort of uh, private or public collection of uh, items within that uh, class that we will want to iterate over. So I will be showing you a pattern, uh, an example of the iteration pattern today. And in my example, we have an object containing a catalog of classes. The object uses an array list to contain a list of courses it also uses a linked list which contains the names of each class. So what we want to do is define an iterator pattern that will allow us to iterate over either the list of courses, uh, list of courses or the class names in the course catalog object. So either one. So the UML diagram for my class is going to look pretty similar to the generic one, just with the uh, actual names put in there. Um, so we still have a client. Our abstract uh, container here is just called iterator container, and our abstract iterator is called course iterator because we'll be iterating over courses. Um, our concrete container is course catalog. That is the uh, object that we want to iterate over. And then we have a catalog iterator, which serves as the concrete iterator uh, for our program. And you can see under course catalog there, we have two private uh, member variables that we want to be able to iterate through, and those are course names, which is a linked list, and then an array list of uh, that we call course list. All right, so let's take a look at the code. So over here in course catalog.java, uh, this has all of the classes for the program, and you can see right next to that is client.java. That'll contain the client code. Um, but we have uh, four classes, like I just showed. Uh, here first is a uh, abstract interface. This is going to serve as our abstract iterator, we call it course iterator, and so it just has uh, defines has next and next course, which will be like has next and next that you saw in the generic uh, UML. Right here, we have an abstract interface, which is going to be our iterator container that is going to serve as our abstract class, and that defines an iterator object. You know, so now for the meat, we have the concrete classes um, all the way down. Um, we have this course catalog. So the course catalog, as you can see, has the two private member variables that I mentioned before uh, right here. So it's a linked list called course names and an array list called course list. So it's two different uh, type of variables, but we want to be able to iterate over either with just one call from the, from the client. Um, here we're just setting up some of the example data. So you can see for course names, I have things like software architecture patterns and technical writing. And for course list, I have the actual course title, so CIS 476 and so on. And so lastly, we have our catalog iterator. So this is the concrete iterator, and this will be doing the iteration work for us. So we can see um, for our has next, our Boolean, it's very similar to what you would see uh, from a generic one. It's going to check to see if there's another item in that list to iterate over, and if so, it's going to return true, and if it's not, it will return false. And I have it set up to accept either course names or course lists, so we can tell it which one we're trying to look for. 
Um, right here, the next course, this is what's actually doing the iteration for us. And just like the um, has next, it, it, it performs similar function where we can give it, specify either course names or course list to iterate over, and it will iterate for us. And it makes use of this has next function uh, while it does it. So we can take a look at our client code, and you can see it's very short. All we have to do is instantiate a course catalog and a course iterator. And then we're going to perform two different actions. So one, we want to iterate and print out all of uh, the items in our course list. And we specify that by saying course list right here. And we're going to do the same thing, but we want to look at the course names. So we're using the one iterator pattern to do two types of iteration. And I'll show you an example of how this works. So we go up here and run the client. You can see down here in our console, console uh, this first while loop executes and we are given um, all of the course lists, uh, the, the entire contents of the course list is printed out below. Next we have the course names from this while loop and down below you can see those are also printed out as well too. Uh, so that's a quick uh, simple example of how an iteration iterator pattern can be used practically um, and you can hopefully get an idea of how it can be used extensively and, and simplify things and definitely when you look at this client code it's a lot easier to read um, than if you had to do all the iteration yourself. So that's about it for this presentation. Hope you guys learned something new about the iterator pattern today. Uh, thank you very much for watching.